Great, so thanks for, for joining. Um, so I think, uh, I guess we have a couple of groups uh, um, outstanding, but that's okay for now. Uh, so hopefully you can uh, communicate to the other groups if you're part of that as well. And, uh, and obviously we have the recording for them to listen to. So I don't, I don't have actually a, um, a structured agenda for this call. Um, and the reason behind that is, is, is really, I, uh, I wanted to kind of see that we can build a bit more collaboration between the various groups, because I think that's important uh, for two reasons. One is um, I, I think um, it can really help in, in developing uh, uh, various um, programs and projects that, that uh, uh, groups are working on. So I, I think there's always connections and I don't really want these groups uh, operate in silos. So I think that's why I wanted to have these the, uh, have these calls start with the the chairs and and the vice chairs to kind of build a little bit of a collaboration behind it. And the other thing, obviously, also is is uh, it can also help to cross promote a group participation. You know, so I think uh, I think all the groups could could uh, probably use a little bit more engagement, um, get more people on board. And, uh, and also in terms of um, sharing kind of like best practices, some groups are better than others. Um, and, I, and I think it always can, really comes down uh, to, the, to the chairs and, and, and the leadership of the groups that, that are able to kind of um, motivate uh, uh, people and, and, and create interest. Um, but again, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's never easy to do that because we're all, all busy. So, so I think it's good to kind of um, share best practices and, and cross promote uh, so we can get more participation in the group. So as I said, I mean, some are doing really well, uh, others are not so well. Um, but I mean, obviously, I mean, I think the culture group is a good example where uh, I, I think Jaffe um, haven't been, hasn't been able to, to really uh, drive engagement. And, and so now he resigned from that, which is probably uh, not necessarily a bad thing. So, so I think we can regroup or, or restructure that that uh, art and culture group, which I think is uh, is an important uh, topic. In any event, um, so that's that's one thing. So I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about that and and open up. The other thing I also uh, saw that um, uh, Willem just joined, uh, who is uh, uh, the interim uh, uh, chair for Destination Mekong, and as many of you know that uh, we're looking to establish Destination Mekong as a private sector-led tourism board uh, working uh, in parallel with, uh, with um, MTCO, uh, which is you know, obviously the public sector side, so really executing and implementing the various initiatives. And um, you know, a few days ago, I had, I had a call uh, with uh, Lutzi Matzik, who many of you know, uh, obviously, uh, 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 very, very engaged and active um, when it comes to the region, uh, chairman of, of Asian Trails. And, and, and so, I mean, he not really understanding really what, what's, what's going on, but we just had a, a catch up call on that. And, uh, he, you know, he never really saw the big value in MTCO and in, in, uh, Mekong Tourism Coordinating Office, but obviously saw the importance of that. Um, but when I explained to him destination Mekong, being uh, launched or implemented uh, by really driving these initiatives, these marketing campaigns and so on, he actually got quite excited uh, and, and saw that quite valuable. So, so I think um, there's not one that's more important than the other, public or private sector. I think what, what really uh, brings the value out there is, is the collaboration between public and private sector. So I think that's what we're trying to, to make happen. So I think I, think I wanted to have this call on two things. One is obviously kind of like strengthen these expert groups, drive collaboration, and and uh, increase engagement and participation, um, and and see also how these groups can work together in 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 really driving their the various projects and and uh, look at um, you know best practices, how um, you know not not to reinvent the wheel, and on the, on the other hand, talk about destination Mekong. Uh, because we actually believe, and I'll, I'll, maybe I'll ask uh, Willem to say a few words uh, as well. Uh, we'll actually see these expert groups at, as real as pillars for Destination Mekong. Yes, we have uh, 
I think around uh, 20 programs that we're planning, around 10 are live right now, Mekong Moments, Mekong Minis, Experience Mekong Collection, other ones you know about, and other ones are being launched. Um, and that's obviously important, but I think the expert groups really bring in this expertise and, um, and the domain uh, uh, foundation when it comes to um, wildlife tourism, when it comes to child protection, when it comes to arts and culture, wellness, um, sustainability, and, 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 and so on. So, so I, I think um, we want to see how we can actually get the uh, expert groups uh, also more involved. Um, right now we have an interim board, which is chaired by uh, Willem and, and Michael Marshall from, uh, from Minor Group. And end of this year, or beginning of next year, we are looking to have actually an elected board of directors of Destination Mekong. Um, and we're working on the charter right now on the business plan and, and also the um, the agreement with the government of Cambodia, who is going to be the host of the Destination Mekong. Um, and we're thinking of how can we actually bring the chairs of the expert groups into the board as well. This could be as voting or as non-voting voting members, but I think we believe that this is important because obviously these groups are active in really driving Destination Mekong forward. So maybe Willem, if you want to add a few thoughts to this, um, uh, if you have any, uh, we didn't talk about this before, but I, th I thought um, this is this is obviously something that is uh, critical in in really building a uh, very successful and solid destination Mekong. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, thank, uh, thanks, Jens. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I didn't really uh, know what <laughs> what was on the agenda actually. Not, nothing, uh, nothing. Nothing. Okay, well, that, that makes it clear then. Uh, so sorry, I, I was think it was me because I was late. Uh, uh, no, I, I, you know, uh, Destination Mekong is very exciting. Uh, and to have something like a more practical implementation of, of what MTCO has been doing over the, over the, the, the past years. Uh, and like you say, we have seen it in in many of the initiatives that uh, that were taken already and that are out there. Experience Mekong, Mekong Moments, and all of that. Uh, the the Destination Film Festival. Uh, all of it is very important to um, uh, to bring forward. And I think Destination Mekong is very interesting because it is a uh, what we envision is to set up a um, a tourism board, but a tourism board not for just one country, but for actually the Mekong region as a destination. Um, and I think this is very exciting in particular because the region also uh, has uh, smaller destinations like uh, Laos and, uh, and Cambodia. They are uh, destinations that are likely to struggle for uh, in the coming years like Myanmar. Um, and then some bigger destinations like Thailand uh, and, and, and China, obviously, uh, in there as well. So to uh, uh, to have a, a tourism board to represent, uh, not only to represent all of these destinations, as, uh, these countries as one destination, but also to progress on all of the initiatives that are already in place right now and to build on that is super exciting. Um, at the same time, it's a, it's a massive undertaking. Uh, so, uh, to be honest, we are struggling a little bit on where to find a uh, hold on this massive project. Uh, uh, and that's not helped by the fact that we are all locked down uh, and uh, the industry is uh, very much without cash. Um, so, it's, it's really a, a very big challenge, but at the same time, uh, I couldn't think about a more important time to have a coordinating uh, uh, or, or a, a, a project like this to support the recovery. Uh, you know, it couldn't be more important. So, uh, and that, that's being seen in uh, the different Zoom meetings that we have, uh, still have a lot of uh, people uh, joining them. So, so yeah, I think it's a, a marvelous idea to make sure that these uh, MeTech uh, subcommittees, so to speak, 
uh, form an integral part of uh, Destination Mekong. That would be really good. Yesterday, we had an, uh, a talk with um, the Climate Change SDG Committee, uh, where we kind of felt like to not make this an, uh, a committee for the SDGs, because that is way too broad, but maybe having the SDGs being linked to different uh, committees uh, so that uh, we can align with the UN SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so, so yeah, it's very, very exciting. Um, so, uh, so yeah, uh, thank you. And, uh, uh, I think, I think it's brilliant to add somehow to the board. We can, we can talk about it and, uh, a little bit further. Um, I think it is important to kind of like formalize these committees with, uh, uh, committee chairs, vice chairs, things like that. However, committees want to set it up. I think that's really helpful. And then having uh, these chairs or vice chairs either uh, at least as, as an advisory board member, at least. Uh, but if they want to, uh, they can become electable to become a board member, actually, as well as we go into the uh, election process. But that's for later. So uh, yeah, uh, enthusiastic about this. But uh, Jens, uh, over to you to explain a little bit more about where we are together today. Yeah, thank you, Willem. Um, so yes, I mean, I, I, as Willem said, I mean, we're in the process right now of setting this up. Uh, Garrett's working very hard in, 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 um, in facilitating some of these documents, uh, you know, from, from this uh, agreement with the government of Cambodia and the incorporation piece, which then kind of uh, gives us potentially access to development funds and other, other private uh, funding. Uh, we're having a call uh, tomorrow morning, I believe, uh, with, with an entity that helps various uh, other tourism boards to um, uh, create uh, funding via uh, uh, marketing programs and so on. So we're looking at all various initiatives um, and, and uh, possibilities to really build this up. And um, uh, the, the expert groups, I think, in terms of really creating a domain expertise is, is critical, not only uh, to uh, uh, engage the various networks that come with these expert groups, obviously, uh, which I think is very powerful. So, I mean, we have a kind of like a horizontal and a vertical strategy, but it's also then to um, publish information um, that can be integrated into strategies and, and also launch other uh, programs and initiatives and campaigns. Uh, so, so that's what we are like um, discussing right now. Nothing has been said in stone yet, uh, but at least there is consideration that maybe the chairs uh, of the expert groups should automatically part, be part of the board. Um, they may, as I said, they may or may not be have a voting rights. Uh, but again, I mean, I think there, there's various, um, you know, let's say best practices out there. You know, we looked obviously at the PATA, which is, which is close to home, uh, where let's say committee chairs are part of the board, um, but, uh, but not have, you know, the full rights. Um, and, and other ones are, are functioning um, very uh, somewhat differently. So I think um, in the end, we're just trying to figure that out, but I think this could be a good discussion today as well. And then also, I mean, we wanna have peri periodic um, meetings with the chairs and vice chairs, which I think is important to kind of keep things going. Because as I said, I think these expert groups are a critically important and make destination Mekong also unique. So maybe with that, um, Maybe we'll, I'll just open it up if there's any thoughts. Um, and um, so maybe we'll start with the discussion around destination Mekong a little bit. And, and I know uh, um, Willem has to run. I think he has another uh, meeting uh, coming up if I'm not mistaken, but, but I think then after that, if Willem has to run, we can then shift over to a more discussion around um, best practices on these expert groups and how um, the expert groups can collaborate uh, uh, well together. So maybe we'll start uh, with Destination Mekong and what people think how the expert group should be involved with Destination Mekong. Obviously, they're part of Destination Mekong, 
uh, but but also how they should um, be involved on the board or not uh, and, and how that should play out. So maybe with that, I'll just open it up if there's any thoughts, uh, anyone? No one's raising the, the hand. Is there someone? Wangmala. I can't see that. Okay, okay, Sophie, go ahead, please. Well, actually, it was Wangmala who was raising her hand, but from my side, well, I don't know if we have to be member of the board, but if we are not, there should be at least a mechanism that get us close to the board, some kind of me uh, communication mechanism, or like uh, maybe a meeting or something like this. Okay. Good. Any anybody else? Uh, just one. Yep. Yeah. I don't know sure. who's raising their hand. Mike or Willem or Garrett, I see as well. Go ahead, Willem, and then Garrett. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I just heard to hook up on uh, of what Sophie said. I, I think uh, nobody is going to be forced on the board uh, as a board member. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, but I, I do think it might, it, it might be a good idea. Uh, the more I think about it, it might be just a good idea for uh, uh, the chairs of the of the, uh, the expert groups to be uh, on the advisory board, which kind of means they can, if they will, if they can uh, join board meetings as an as an uh, uh, as an advisory board member, so um, you know, no no voting rights and stuff like that. Uh, if they don't need, if they don't want to, uh, but it might also be interesting to, uh, well, for everybody to become uh, electable for a permanent board member as well. But I I, I think at least having uh, the chair, uh, the chairs being uh, an advisory board member and therefore linked to board meetings. Um, and then I could always uh, appoint a vice vice chair to attend uh, if if that's more uh, more suitable. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, Mala, your hand up there. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Hi everyone. So. Um, for me, I think I I I, I am in two group, right? Don't <laughs> you remind me. One is uh, I think on the education. I think I'm with uh, Sophie, and also on the group of uh, culture uh, yeah. with uh, Jeffy. Right? Yes. yes. So uh, for education, I think that we have a uh, very good uh, uh, member, and then. I feel, uh, you know, uh, my participation is is uh, uh, will be uh, useful for and, and and we have the team like Sophie and uh, to work on that. Uh, for the culture uh, with Jeffy, uh, I think that uh, we have a bit of the difficulty to to find more member. Uh, but at the same time, the the topic is uh, is important for tourism. So we, we need to find the, the right person to you know to to be to lead the idea and then to uh, uh, to to create or innovate for the new way to to uh, uh, keep uh, maintain or preserve the the culture. So. Um, I think maybe we have to uh, try to uh, get the new generation uh, to join the team. So, for example, I, I see from uh, our last uh, visit Lao, uh, Lao Tiao Lao campaign that we do for domestic uh, market last year. And I, I see that some new products uh, um, uh, come, came out from the young group people, you know, they mix between um, an opera house uh, and uh, the group of um, uh, what you call a painting for the painting. Mm. So they have the, the, the student at the art school, uh, they come uh, to the, to the uh, 
Opera House is a kind of cafe, but they play the classic music. Mm. So, and then they bring the, the, the young customer come at the same time to learn, uh, to learn uh, simply basic of painting and listen the classical music. Mm -hmm. This is uh, completely uh, uh, different. I mean, normally, if I talk that to, to my kid, I, I put the classic uh, music at home and they say, oh, mom, this is for the own people. You know, it is not interest them. But, uh, but this kind of cafe that they mix between, so they can, they can get some young people to join. So, uh, by saying that, I just think maybe we should try to find some young generation that that their interest uh, uh, about the culture, the tradition, but they want to promote by their own way. Mm -hmm. And they add, uh, you know, they, they add the technology, they add the digital thing in, uh, like uh, in Luang Prabang. Uh, now we start to have the, um, they organize the, uh, what we call the, the, the painting expo uh, by invite only few people because it's, uh, uh, they have to uh, keep distancing, but they do live, the visit on live. So mm. I think this kind of uh, activity to keep promote and maintain uh, the culture, the, yeah, it should come from uh, the new generation. I, mm. I don't want to say that Jeffy is uh, old, but, but at the same time, yeah, he have a uh, uh, certain experience, uh, a certain information that he, he love it. He want to make it a uh, uh, long life, but uh, we need to pass this to, to the, the young right. people. I, I, I think as it relates to the culture group, let, let's uh, have that on a separate discussion. Uh, just mentioned, I mean, Jeffrey, just a, a few minutes uh, before he resigned as, as chair, because I think he uh, kind of uh, at least realized that he's not the right person to do that. So I respect him for resigning. I, th I think uh, it, it's no surprise to me. But I, th I think that gives us an opportunity to regroup that uh, mm. important topic. I think I agree with you, culture, and art is is critical for this region, uh, and and it goes beyond you know maybe what 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 uh, what let's say Jeffy is thinking about as it relates to culture. So I think it needs to be fresh. It needs to be different, and, mm. and it, it's it's an important way to mm. position the region. I mean, you're you're uh, running a tour operation, and and Willem as well. I mean, I think the this is one of the reasons why people come to visit this this part of the world. I mean, I, I, I just uh, not to go too much into this topic, but I mean, I was in a, uh, I, I think a few months ago at, at a bar in Chinatown in Bangkok, and and mm. and they had a band which, which which was basically just you know cultural music and so on, but it was a very mm. hip place, very young and so on. So I think we need to bring that energy into that group and then kind of transfer it into how we look to position. Uh, the Mekong region, you know, when, mm -hmm. when borders open again. So that's why this group mm -hmm. is important. But let's let's uh, have that in a separate discussion. Okay. But since uh, Jeffrey resigned, I mean, I think that as, as I think we leave your vice, vice chair. So I think I think for the time being, you know, I think we should have a discussion and then maybe you should think how this group should be restructured and and, and then we can. Okay. Okay. There. So that's a, as related to that. But I think, yeah, thanks for for your thoughts there. Um, I just saw Martin joined as well. So we have health and wellness now here too. Just Martin very quickly. So we talk about two things. One is on how these groups can better collaborate to, to really uh, uh, drive more participation, engagement, and also uh, more effective in, in executing their different programs, whatever that might be, um, and, and also help each other in, in, uh, in not everyone reinventing the wheel when it comes to being effective. Um, and, and the second topic is uh, on Destination Mekong, on how these uh, expert groups and, and, and the leadership within uh, can also play a bigger role within Destination Mekong. And then once we are, as we're, as you know, we're, we're establishing Destination Mekong, potentially also can play a, a, a role on, on the board uh, in the future. 
so that's kind of like what, what our discussion is right now. So we're just I just open it up, do a few comments. Um, so you didn't miss too much, but uh, but yes, I mean uh, again, I, I think uh, Garrett had a had a comment. I don't know what yes. Uh, Go ahead. I mean, I, I just wanted to mention about the opportunity we have right now. I mean, it's not very often that uh, new tourism boards are established. Um, so um, uh, for me right now, I'm working on the draft charter for Destination Mekong. Um, obviously, I'm trying to uh, create a structure that will um, enable on one hand us to, to, to raise money from different sources to make it sustainable and uh, to have a support structure for the industry. Um, and at the same time also to allow every stakeholder to have their word in it without having it too complex basically. So because it's a membership structure, obviously there should be, uh, there should be tools for members to have their voice. But at the same time, we want to have these expert groups, that's why we have them, um, to have, to be able to influence uh, uh, what uh, Destination Mekong is doing. So, so we are looking into having the chairs as members of the board, uh, not the executive board, because uh, we want to have a, a tight exec executive board to, to be able to have the operations very efficiently of Destination Mekong but to have the chairs of the working group members of the, of the board to really participate in everything and, and, and be able to directly um, get support from the organization. And on that side, obviously now, um, we have to see how do we formalize this a little bit and not become too, um, too technical in the whole operation, we want to have it working very easily. And that's, I think this is a time now where everyone can give their input, what they think, how we can, how we can support the working group best, how, how can we formalize this whole process. So if any one of you has any ideas about, about that, I would be very curious uh, to learn more because you all have quite, quite a lot of experience working with international organizations. Okay, thank you, Derek. Anyone else? Any, any thoughts from any chairs or vice chairs as it relates to um, collaboration or, or involvement? And maybe if I can uh, jump in, yeah. uh, thank you so much for uh, this opening up, this opportunity of, of possible participation in, uh, um, in uh, um, Destination Mekong in this new forum through the board. I'm just wondering, uh, what exact responsibilities would be there and whether it's a right formula for all the participants, because I guess it will depend whether um, the, um, the groups uh, are formed by the private sector or maybe by NGOs. So just as a um, reflection, maybe uh, for NGOs to participate, uh, a good formula would be um, to serve as an advisor in an advisory role or maybe observers. Uh, we are members of uh, some, some other groups working in other regions and, and we um, play the role of an observer um, or an advisor because maybe uh, being a member of the board that would not be the best uh, way uh, for NGOs to participate. And uh, uh, it, yeah, but if it's like an advisory or an observer, I think it could be a good, uh, good way for participation if that would be possible. And we are very happy to, to contribute to uh, uh, the work of this region on the issue of child protection. Yeah, no, I, I think actually it's a very good point. And, and um, as well I'm said before, I mean, no one get, is, is gonna be forced to be on a board. Um, but I think the first thing to say is that um, the, the board, once we, we um, start with elections uh, later on this year or beginning of next year, um, anyone who is eligible to be elected has to be a MeTech member. So now we have, let's say, around 110, 120 MeTech members. So all of them, uh, they would be eligible to be um, nominated. And then also MeTech members would elect uh, um uh, the board you know so that's basically how it is so we have a kind of like a community of around 120 people uh we were also kind of thinking of of um 
if we wanted to include experienced Mekong collection businesses in there too, to really kind of uh, bring that uh, in, in the fold as well. Um, so the, the responsibilities of the board are really more looking at the strategic side. So, I mean, when, when you look at the different pillars that we have, so we have, let's say, MeTech, which is really, I mean, a, a loose advisory group uh, of, of 120 people that we have, you know, these meetings with that, that uh, provide the foundation of the expert groups and also to promote and, and help with various programs and initiatives. Uh, um, especially when borders open again, uh, also provide advice. I mean, we had the consultative workshop on, on, on the communications plan, all these kind of things. So this is what this community is for. The, the board of directors of Destination Mekong is more really to provide some oversight uh, from an operational and from a strategic standpoint. So obviously right now it's, uh, it's very critical to put the right things in place. And as, as, we, as we couldn't really do, a, do an election, uh, and it's a little bit too early for that anyhow, since uh, Destination Mekong isn't incorporated yet, we established an interim board. And the interim board is really there to, to kind of help um, create and build Destination Mekong that, that you know, it, it's transparent, that, that we look at all the various things uh, that need to be looked at. And, and, and we try to keep that board as diverse as possible uh, from various angles so, so i mean we have um, you know uh, sector uh, diversity we have location or geographic diversity we also have gender diversity in there so um so that's that's really uh, the piece there so the board of directors is really there to, to provide this oversight um and and also it, it will uh, uh, have various roles so for example to appoint a ceo uh, to look at the finances uh, to look at how potentially funding is being spent on, 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 on different initiatives and so on. But as I said, it's more operational strategic, where MeTech is really more like a community and, and provides advice, but also acts almost like as ambassadors for, for the programs. And the expert groups almost like sit in the middle. So the expert groups almost like are their own little committees specific to the various themes or topics, if it's food or wellness or child protection or whatever it might be, um, creating their own outputs, uh, which then is shared, you know, with one hand with the government, but also on the other hand with the with MeTech and the and the larger industry. So the idea is then the the chairs or vice chairs, so it's basically a representative of these expert groups, to have a voice on the board just again to influence a little bit the direction from a strategic and op operational standpoint right let me give you a, a, an example now just uh, one that pops in my head so let's say we're, we're looking to do a campaign and and we say yes i mean we need to position the region we're going to do a campaign like mekong moments we've done it we have experience with that we can do that uh, so what should we do so then vincent might say well let's 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 focus on food Right, let's focus on food. We have a group. We, we, we can really build this together because let's say if I would say let's do a food campaign, I may or may or may not have the experience, the networks or the expertise to really pull that off. Right. So 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 then obviously there we have uh, the food group. So like, yes, I mean, we can actually provide guidance so we can we can see that that is steered. Or Gabriella, you may say, well, you know what? Food is great, but we also should look at child protection. Right. Now, again, if the expert groups weren't really represented within the, the board or had, wouldn't have a voice uh, in, in the board, then that wouldn't come out, right? We wouldn't maybe even think about child protection that, uh, that we should do a campaign, or if we were, we, we don't know how to do it and so on. So, so you see, we're, we're, I think we, we designed the expert groups in what we believe the most critical, important pillar topics for the region to position the region to to reopen the region all these kind of things and, and it's not just like the normal things but we have things like wildlife and we have things like health and wellness we have things like child protection and food and so on so i think we capture quite a good array uh again there could be additional groups that are being formed you know based on relevance and based on passion people 
So if someone says, well, we should have uh, should have an ex ex um, accessible tourism group, for example, or we should have a group on um, on mice and meetings, whatever, right? That can happen. Uh, but right now, I mean, we have these six groups that are active, and and a, and a couple other ones that are, that are being developed. So so again, that's that's really the idea. So we have the board of directors. That's the role, strategic and operational. We have MeTech, which is a community of, of people uh, in, in the region to provide advice and, and, and ambassadorship. And, and then we have these expert groups that kind of looking at specific themes and coming out of MeTech, but then I believe could have a voice in, in the board as well. Now, how that is done from a governance standpoint, and, and Garrett was not 100% correct, it, it's still very open, right? So it could be that they're part of the executive board or not, right? So we have to we have to see what the right formula is. Um, so that hasn't really been decided yet. But I think in my mind, at least, I think, and that just might be me alone, but for me, I think it's important to give the expert groups a voice um, to participate in these board discussions when it comes to strategic and operational decisions, how we uh, how we make destination make them uh, most relevant and the programs and initiatives most successful. Yeah. So that's maybe I I hope I answered your question and maybe some other people's questions as well. Uh, I didn't address that before and and, and how we look at let's say meet tech and and the board and the roles uh, um, in, in particular. But yeah, so that's that's kind of at least how I see it. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, that's clarified. Okay. Any anybody else who is? Uh... Yeah, I have Janina, a Go ahead. So one thing that we have discussed with our so I'm working. Oh, sorry, sorry. So I'm Janina. Um, I'm the chair of uh, Wildlife and Conservation Group. So together with my group, we discussed one of activities that I think could be useful for all other groups as well. And it's uh, to review the experience Mekon collection, uh, the different businesses that are already in this uh, collection, because we have noticed that uh, A, uh, there are several businesses that are in the GMC uh, and they are not in the experience Mekon collection and we, it would be great to invite them to join. And uh, second, that uh, there are some businesses that are there and probably for a good reason, uh, but there is almost no description on their sustainability practices. So we just see the title and the website, but uh, we don't know why they are there. What are the great sustainability points that, uh, that they do? So what we hope to do is to review uh, what's currently, invite others to join and ask those who have missing information to fill it in. So that's something probably that re that's relevant for all groups. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, for uh, for child yeah. security, uh, if it could be reviewed, if there are some that are um, that should not be there, or for the food, some who maybe should add more information, etc. Uh, so that's one point. And then the second is that uh, as we are looking for our group activities, uh, we have. We are looking who are, who are the visitors to GMC. And as we know, the majority of visitors to GMC are from Asia region. So we are asking ourselves how we will, how we will reach them, how we will communicate with them to reach our goals in the best way. And we have noticed that uh, currently uh, many of the, of the board, uh, oh, sorry, of the chair and vice chairs and the group members seem to be uh, mostly Westerners. And it would be great that there would be more participation from 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 the nationals of the GMC countries, so that because they are, they would know the best how to communicate uh, uh, with uh, with people from their own uh, uh, culture and, uh, and language. And then uh, we also discussed that to communicate our messages, we could probably also invite and outsource, for example, uh, famous travel influencers from, let's say, Laos or Thailand or whatever country we want to reach um, the, so that they can help us to spread the message in case we don't have the, the necessary skills within our group. So again, something that we thought could be useful for other groups. 
Okay, uh, great. Now let me let me quickly uh, uh, just comment on the first one. So so experience make on collection. Yes, so so I totally agree. And and uh, we've always looked to every year to audit uh, uh, experience make on collection. So now obviously we we we're at a stage that we need to audit just because of you know COVID. Some businesses uh, either are out of business or temporary, permanently closed, or even changed or or, or whatever. So I think it's a good good uh, time uh, to look at the, the current membership, add other ones in there, making sure that that uh, has been, that the information is correct, and that we have a a, a group or, or a collection full of integrity uh, that that really is aligned in terms of what we want to do. My goal was in the first uh, two years uh, to to get basically a baseline of businesses, and 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 that uh, went quite well. Uh, so I think now is the right time to look at that. So I hope that, yeah, I mean, all the other groups can join in that effort. It's an important effort. Uh, right now, it's more like, you know, uh, Ton and myself who just manage uh, Experience Mekong Collection. We have around, around 150 active businesses now out of the 350 or so, 320 that are listed. So again, I mean, I, I agree with you on that, that, that we definitely need to kind of now audit what's there and, and, and make sure that also other businesses are added. Uh, quickly to the second point, I, I, I think I hear you. I, we always want to get obviously uh, um, a lot of local engagement. Um, uh, it's not always easy, uh, either in recruiting them or then, and then number two in, in getting them engaged and participate. I, I mean, this. Uh, obviously, it's always a good example who joins these calls. Unfortunately, it is kind of like they're always the same people. On one hand, that's great. On the other hand, yes, we want to have other people in there. I think, again, that might also be um, something where the expert groups can get active because in their own networks, uh, they might be able to pull people in um, that may not be MeTech members now, uh, but but could become MeTech members. Uh, or there are MeTech members already, but not active. You know, for example, I mean, I, I, I see Vincent, uh, he's on my, on my screen here. So, I mean, uh, Lu Meng, for example, I mean, he's a celebrity chef in Cambodia. Obviously, you know, he is Khmer. He's, you know, when it comes to Khmer cuisine, uh, he is it. There's another lady uh, who, who was a part of Mist, who was also a Khmer and, 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 and doing a lot of stuff with food. Both of them should be, in not only the food expert group, but also very active in, in, in MeTech. Um, I have a good relationship with Lu Meng. Uh, he texts me on WhatsApp, but, but, um, uh, but, but he hasn't really been on calls. He's very busy uh, and that's fine. But I think you know, that's just one example how we need to see how we make it relevant. Uh, you know, someone like Lu Meng, he's a great guy. He's very passionate about food, about the region, about Cambodia, about tourism. Uh, so I think we may need to make it relevant for these people also to to participate. Uh, and, and again, some of the local people may say, well, you know, yes, I, I want to be part of it, but uh, my English is not that good and, and so on. So again, I think we need to find ways to make it comfortable and, 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 uh, and easy for people to join, you know. So and, and the expert groups might be a, an, a, an easy way in for some people that then could be like the first step. And then the second step is uh, in, in bigger MeTech meetings. You know? So that's the thought. I mean, yes, but uh, we've been trying, it's not easy. So, uh, so yeah, it's a, it's, it's a journey, but, but that's not unique to this, this group. I think that's, uh, that's everywhere. You know? Good. Any other thoughts? I see a comment here from, from, uh, from Martin on the chat. So Destination Mekong is kind of a private sector marketing platform which offers support or home for these expert groups. I'm not sure if this is a question or a statement, but yes, I mean, uh, all the expert groups are uh, coming out of MeTech and MeTech is part of Destination Mekong. Destination Mekong is a private sector led tourism, uh, um, tourism board, if you so will, and Mekong Tourism Coordinating Office is the uh, public sector owned uh, secretariat, tourism secretariat for the region. So MTCO is strictly government and destination Mekong is private sector. And, and so as, as the expert groups are all 
you know, private sector led and private sector driven, so they're part of destination maker. Any other questions? Mia, do you have a question? Or uh, John Yetali? Mia, do you have a no, not, not a question really. I was just gonna say that I think that it makes sense to have the expert groups and the advisory board, not necessarily with voting power, but so that they can feed into the trajectory of, of destination Mekong as it moves forward. Yeah. No, I, th I think that's a good point. And obviously, um, we need to kind of just look at the governance, how we can how we can structure it in the best possible way. But I think I mean, personally, as I said before, I think it's important for these expert groups to have a voice uh, in, you know, in, in, in the board, so more at a more strategic level. So what is the role of the Mekong Tourism Coordination Office, um, what happens if they have a new director that doesn't want to have anything to do with this? You, oh, I mean, so I mean, yes, I, I'm a little bit surprised by that question, but but maybe other people have the same question. I just wonder, it's a snow uh, question, Jens. So, so the Mekong Tourism Coordinating Office is owned by the six governments. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's part of the, the GMS platform, Greater Mekong Subway uh, Region Framework, which was established in 1992 by the Asian Development Bank with various sectors, tourism being one of it. And, and then in 2005, MGCO was established as its own office or secretariat. Uh, so where all the, the various other secretariats within that framework are basically run by the Asian Development Bank, this is the only one that's actually independent and it ind independently funded by the government. Um, the, the executive director is appointed uh, on a two-year term by the government, and we're going through that process right now. And the, uh, and the job of that executive director, as you, as you could see in, in, the, in the TOR, you know, if, if you uh, probably have read the, the job description, is essentially uh, to lead secretarial functions for the government. So the tourism working group meeting, uh, help to, to organize the Mekong Tourism Forum. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a public sector secretariat. The engagement with the private sector is limited uh, and also has, has never really been, in, in, especially in my, uh, before my time, a big priority. You know, just because, I mean, yes, the governments want to communicate you know what's happening on the policy framework that's obviously also done by the various ministries but engagement is, is limited now because of the resources that mtco has you know from a from a you know let's say financial standpoint but also from a resource standpoint you know personnel um not much can actually be done beyond um really the the secretarial functions you know, and that's how it was designed. It, it's a, and that's why there's a, the name coordinating in the name. It's, it's a coordinating office. It's not an executing office, right? So it's really more like to, to, to look at um, facilitation of various uh, policies, initiatives, and so on. And one example would be, let's say, the, the, the tourism the sector strategy or the, the marketing strategy, the communications plan, all these kind of things. Now, what we have then learned is that, well, that's great, and we're not unique in the world with that, but these policies or these strategies are being created, but many times they're not executed. You know, there might be something in the, in the strategy, let's do a social media uh, uh, campaign, but in the end, there's no money behind that to actually do that, you know? So yes, uh, we then said, well, you know what, if we create these initiatives, and we engage the private sector, we can actually execute the, these campaigns. You know? So to answer your, 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 your fundamental question is what happens if the new executive director does not want to engage with, with Destination Mekong or the private sector? Well, there's a couple of things. The first thing is the governments have now realized how powerful 
this destination Mekong platform has become. Um, they've won awards uh, for, for campaigns like Mekong Moments, uh, globally recognized and so on. And I always kind of brought the government on stage or had the government's goal. So they liked that. They, they kind of felt like, well, this is great. And so we've built the foundation for the governments to actually appreciate this partnership, where normally governments can be very sensitive in working with the private sector because the private sector many times criticizes the government, right? And, and the governments don't like to be criticized, especially in this part of the world. Um, now, if the new director doesn't want to do it, a couple of things have happened. The first thing that has happened is that a member country, Cambodia, has agreed to be the official host of Destination Mekong. That's a huge step because that means that now the other five governments support the other member government, Cambodia in this, in, in this case, for hosting Destination Mekong. Now, if you, Martin and John and Vincent and, and myself come together and say, oh, let's do our own uh, tourism board, probably this wouldn't happen, right? So this is a huge coup that a member country has agreed to host it. The second thing that has happened is that in, in the last boarding, board meeting, when I presented Destination Mekong you know, as being established and, and, and Cambodia being the host country, in the minutes now, which I don't know a ton if, if it's uploaded already, but in the minutes you can actually read that all the governments have now, number one, supported Destination Mekong, number two, supported Cambodia as a host country, and number three, have agreed to direct the new executive director in collaborating with Destination Mekong, right? So this is what I've been doing, setting up, you know, in, in, in my own little strategic framework in not only building it, but also making sure that when I leave as executive director, the new director, you know, if he or she, um, I hopefully, I mean, they see hopefully the, the benefit in doing that, but if they, in, to your point, do not see the benefit in doing it, the countries uh, will direct that person to do that, you know, because, uh, because as the executive director have actually a lot less freedom uh, unless the governments give you the, the freedom. So I, I was quite lucky that the governments gave me a lot of freedom, but in reality, actually, uh, normally the governments uh, control an executive director very tightly and uh, and they can tell you okay we want you to do this and this and if that person doesn't do it then that person may just get uh, uh, removed you know so so again so I think uh, we have set it as, as up as well as possible you know to to make sure that a collaboration between MTC on destination make on happens and also ADB that, that can be quite critical when it comes to setting up new entities also has officially endorsed Destination Mekong and, and signaled that they will support Destination Mekong as well. You know? So I, I, I may have explained it broader than, than, than you have anticipated, but I think it's necessary. It, it's a good question. Uh, the reason I said it surprised me a little bit because obviously, I mean, you know, uh, Destination Mekong is private sector led, but I think, you know, understanding a little bit the background behind it and, and that the, the situation we're in right now is very fortunate and probably wouldn't have happened, let's say 10 years ago, you know? So this, to get to this point where we are today took a lot of time, patience, relationship building and work uh, to have what we have today. And so that's why someone like Willem have, has agreed to, to be, you know, interim chair because he sees the opportunity now to make a destination Mekong this entity that really can transform this region uh, to drive tourism in a positive way. Thank you. I mean, I think there's some confusion amongst some people um, on, on where METAC exactly sits. And, um, and I think we had the benefit, it was really interesting and a, and a benefit to, to join briefings with ministers and all that. So I think, um, you know, the regular um, country specific or regional briefing. So um, your, your explanation has made it clearer where, where it sits and where it's going. And uh, I think it's very impressive. It's a, a lot of interesting people involved. So um, that was all to the question. Thank you, Jens. Yeah. Maybe just to add to this, I mean, I created MeTech uh, uh, as, as a loose 
just a, a forum, I would call it, um, I, I think in 2015 or 16. And we had the first meeting, you know, after the Mekong Tourism Forum, I believe in Cambodia in Sinopville, which basically was just a round table in the bar where we said, hey, you know what, how was the forum? What can we do better? What are some other initiatives we should do? That was MeTech at that time. And, and, and it was more or less to, to just reach out to the private sector, say, hey, you know what, give us your feedback. That's where MeTech really stopped. But for me, it was important to have some kind of collaboration, which didn't really happen before. Uh, there were trials when, when Peter Simone or my, Mason Florin were the directors to do that, but it wasn't anything sustainable or, or consistent. There were some meetings and some initiatives. But again, so we wanted to create something with a brand, with a name that has a little bit more consistency behind that. But at that time, yes, I mean, uh, un until we started Destination Mekong in 2017, it was really just that. It was, it was like a, uh, having a beer after the conference at the bar and, 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 and just get, getting some feedback. So now MeTech has really grown into, into a, a community of 120 tourism professionals uh, in, in the Mekong region from all countries and genders and, and all of that. So, so I, I think it, it's a big shift. The, 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 the name has existed. It grew out of MTCO, but because as we're now dividing private and public sector and MeTech is private sector, you know, that's why it sits in destination they call, you know. But, uh, but I think what's important to understand there is not a, a left or right, it, it needs to be one, right? So I think in the end, um, some people, you know, don't like or, or don't know how to work with government, some governments don't know or don't like to work with private sector. So this is where these things are, you know, separate, but in the end, it's a Mekong tourism collaboration and only together uh, in a collaborative format it can actually create the value and 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 the, and the power to really transform tourism in this part of the world. Okay, thank you for the question, Martin. And and I'm sure I I, I agree. Other other people have that have these questions as well. And 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 there is obviously confusion. Uh, so we need to go through that process. People understand. But I think the, the simple thing is if it is private sector. It's destination Mekong. If it is government, it's MTCO. You know, but we obviously kind of we we invite the government to join. Uh, actually, it is actually an interesting thing. I mean, we actually reach out to the governments to join MeTech meetings, and you can see how many join. <laughs> so that just basically kind of shows you very clearly, you know, where the mindset lies. Um, we have these country updates. Uh, where, where some of the governments are quite active, you know, Cambodia, Myanmar in the past, uh, and Laos, uh, Vietnam, Thailand, not so much. But, uh, but again, I mean, I think they, they just basically there and using MeTech as a communications channel. And that's what it was meant uh, to be before, you know, so that, that is existing. But we always invite them to join even this meeting. Uh, but again, um, you know, they, they see themselves as, okay, if we have something communicate, it's great to leverage MeTech as a channel and, and uh, the expert groups to learn from what, what's going on there in the various topics. Yes, we wanna learn about that too. So that's why we're looking to build that bridge. You know, once uh, something is, 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 has been created by, by the expert groups, that then the chair or vice chair will uh, have an intervention at the tourism working group uh, to inform about, let's say health and wellness or food or whatever it might be. Good. Any other thoughts? Maybe, maybe um, let, let's shift the discussion a little bit as, as we have, let's say, another uh, 20 minutes or so. Um, what are some of the ideas how the groups you think could better collaborate? Um, I mean, Martin, maybe I, I see you still on my screen there. Maybe I'll, 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 I'll pick on you first. I mean, you've run various committees and groups and, and uh, and, and, and TEDx Chiang Mai and so on. So maybe where do you see the opportunity? I mean, you're very active on the health uh, group right now, which is great. But obviously with that, that also, let's say, has linkages, let's say, to food, for example, right, or, or other areas. So how do you think different groups can best collaborate uh, and, and, uh, and, and also kind of drive more engagement and participation? 
any any ideas or thoughts? Uh, well, I guess it's uh, time to brush up the personal profiles a bit and maybe a bit more detail. I'm thinking about my case, but so that people can see what what you bring to the table and what you're interested in. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm wearing a kind of um, a national or regional hat with with things like wellness and medical tourism. I'm also in that expert group, but I'm, I'm also wearing quite a local hat with being plugged into everything that's happening in, in, in Northern Thailand. And I like that we are focusing on the entire Mekong region, but, but um, for example, here is now an initiative in Chiang Mai to promote um, uh, Lana food. Um, we, we're talking about creative events. Yesterday, you had the sustainability meeting, the expert group, and our next large TEDx event here in Chiang Mai in later in fall to this year um, is, is very focused on the changes we need to make uh, to achieve the sustainability development goals. So, um, so I guess um, what we do or what we're interested in to maybe highlight that a little bit more so either through the groups or sometimes also individuals. I mean, listening to you, Jens, um, I know you focused a bit on the expert groups, but I also feel just in awe of the, um, the diversity of the people that are the Metag advisors. So I think that should never be forgotten that there are many, many interesting people and we just yeah. from time to time need to look at our profiles and, and, and um, and, and share um, what we do. I think we, we were a little bit more active in the past in sharing what's going on in the um, online platform that you had. Um, and, and now we have Signal and we have WhatsApp, so it's all a bit much, but perhaps as you are stabilizing your platform, I know you're making a lot of good changes, perhaps um, letting people know what you do is, is a good way. I, I think you make a couple of interesting points here. The first one is um, obviously, yes, when we when we set up, let's say, MeTech, and when you go to the MeTech page or Destination Mekong, you see 120 people, but we didn't add the buyers on there. Why didn't we add the buyers? It, it's just resources, right? I mean, like, you know, getting bios and, and, and then and editing that, and, and, and you have some people send you a literally a CV, some other people send you a, a paragraph, some other people send you five pages and so on. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit of work to get that all together. So we said, well, for the time being, let's just put the people up there in the picture and the, and, the, and that already takes takes time and effort to do that. But I agree with you. I mean, we, we're actually looking to launch something called Mekong Faces. And with Mekong Faces, we're looking to profile people. You know, So on one hand, yes, I agree with you. I think we should maybe find a simple template and maybe Garrett could think a lot a bit about that. I mean, maybe it's just bullet points, you know, it's like, you know, because people don't really want to read a, a whole bio, but maybe what are your, your key five, you know, passions, you know, uh, you know, you said it, you know, uh, Northern Thailand, you know, health and events and, and creativity. So I'll just make that up knowing yeah. you a little bit, right? So it's like, oh, people can read that. Oh, this takes me like five seconds to read it, but I, I get a bit of an idea of who is Martin, where before I didn't have that, right? So, so maybe it's just like something like that, five bullet points, what are your passions, what are your interests? And we can add that very simply to that. Um, the other thing is with Mekong Faces, we're looking to profile people in the region that could be someone who runs a small business, it could be a MeTech member, it could be a minister, it could be anyone. Uh, just to kind of showcase again the people, because there are lots of interesting people in the region, and, and that can also then kind of translate into tourism promotion. The other thing that we're that I, I'm working on right now is we're looking to actually create a new community, uh, an online community. Um, and, and now, I mean, some may see like, well, that's the last thing we need. We have Facebook, we have LinkedIn, we have WhatsApp, we have Signal, we have this other community we started, uh, you know, and so on. This community is actually pretty cool. Um, it's not necessarily cheap, but, but what it would do is we could actually build in all the expert groups into it. Um, the other thing what we could, there could be any group in it and, and also the management of these, these groups can then be transferred to, to these, these chairs or vice chairs or whoever. We could also go into more geogra geographic groups, right? So for example, this is a, if you say, well, I wanna, I wanna create a group for Northern Thailand, 
right? Or, or Janina said, oh, I wanna, oh, I wanna create a group for Southern Laos or whatever it might be. Uh, so, so that could be something as well, you know? So you have not only, let's say topo topical groups, but you also have geographic groups as well, you know? And, and again, managing all these groups is quite time consuming, but this was with this new community piece, um, this could actually be very good because there everyone has a profile. It, it's like a LinkedIn, you, you build in your own profile and, and then you're connected to organizations and to groups and so on. So, so this is something that, that we're looking to build into Destination Mekong and, and MeTech and, and all the expert groups and everything else would be part of it. It's much bigger on that. It's, it's a communication channel. It, it, it becomes almost like a CRM. So it's quite exciting. So Garrett and I are working on that. It's a... Uh, uh, we haven't really talked about this, but uh, and, and not decided if we're going to do it, but I think it would be very powerful if we went ahead with something like that, you know, and that would, you know, tick some of the boxes that uh, that that you mentioned as well. But any other questions? Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, Vincent, go ahead. No, no, I mean, you, you part really answered the question that I was about to ask, which was, you know, if MeTag is this community and this forum for exchange, and we're expected, to, or, or you know, we should, and we should reach out to collaborate uh, you know, between groups and between expert groups uh, and uh, among members, you know, what, is, what are the mechanisms, so this is what you were, you were just asking, you know, what are the mechanisms to facilitate that communication? Um, because, you know, for several months now, we've been saying, you know, expert work groups should work together. I don't even know where to look for somebody else. I don't even know. Uh, so, I mean, I, there, there are clearly things in the things that are in the food group. Uh, we've talked about, uh, you know, the, the message that went out yesterday and got absolutely no response from anybody in the group was that Peter and I were talking, you know, we had a conversation about the things we could do. And, you know, one of them was like looking at, you know, best practices and examples in um, in tra training and vocational training and hospitality and food, um, which would be a logical tie-in with uh, education. Um, you know, Martin and I obviously have affinities and things and food and health. Um, we, we, yeah, there were a couple of things that we talked about. I, I mean, except for the fact that I know how to reach Martin because we know each other outside of MeTag and outside of uh, Destination Mekong, I wouldn't know you know, I mean, I could, you know, it, it becomes a cumbersome sort of thing like, Don, could you find me somebody's email or somebody's, you know, phone number or could you, you know, Jens, could you do this for me? It's, it, it's not, a, it, there, there's no good um, mechanism for yeah. that. Um, yeah. And um, so that, yes, yeah, so that's one, one issue. Uh, we, I'm, we'd be happy to work together, I'm sure, if we could work together, if, if there was a way for us to work together. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, 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 that was what I was about to yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a good point. I, I think the first thing is the mindset of collaboration, which obviously you have already and many other people have. They see like, oh yeah, I see a connection there. I think again, right now the, the groups are still trying to get off the ground and establish themselves and getting traction and so on. So, I mean, maybe collaboration might not be the first thing you think about, but again, I, th I think there is a mindset of collaboration, which is important. And on the logistics side, yes, I mean, I think right now this is a tough one. I mean, yes, we have these various groups. You can put something into WhatsApp, but uh, it has been fairly, um, you know, you don't always get a response or, or, you know, again, I mean, yes, you could ask Ton, you can ask me, we can reach out and we've done stuff like that before. But again, I mean, we also only have so much time to, to do that. So it's, it's not very efficient. And I, and I get that. This, this platform that I just mentioned would you know, potentially solve that problem, right? I mean, it would almost like be a li big LinkedIn of, of tourism organizations and tourism professionals in the Mekong region. And uh, with MeTech in there, with expert groups in there, with campaigns in there, with, with everything. So, I mean, uh, you could then say like, oh yeah, you know, yes, uh, people would have been tagged themselves, let's say as an interest in food. And you can then easily kind of reach out to people and say like, yes, why don't you join our food group or things like that, you know. So, so yeah. I mean, we're not there yet. We we need to find a bit of cash to 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 finance that. It's 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 not, you know, super amount of money, but it's still money right now. We don't have something in there. But but I mean, you know, when I when I saw the demo and and the only reason I, I found this this platform by accident, um, 
and and first I didn't really know well should I even do the demo because you know I don't have time and what I did I said like wow this ticks all the boxes um, that that we would need you know so this would this would help uh, you know in 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 the instance that you, that you just touched on for sure so yeah Janina yes uh, I just would like to add so thank you Vincent uh, for your for your comment I very much share um, similar opinion and I also think that, that this current group that we have here so all chairs and vice chairs together this is a great opportunity to discuss between us different ideas that we have and then we as chairs and vice chairs we can then communicate those um, those ideas with our with our other members and see uh, and find the resources there so for example as vincent he, you are working for um, you are representing the food group i'm representing the wildlife group and i find that there that there's a room for uh, for collaboration uh, between uh, our two groups for instance because uh, in wildlife and conservation and tourism, uh, food sometimes can be uh, a little bit of an issue that we want to tackle down. Uh, so, for example, collaborating with your group and spreading uh, the good message um, so that there are no bad impact of, uh, of foodies uh, trying a little bit of uh, two uh, exotic uh, products that are not uh, that should not be tried and should not be promoted. Uh, it's something that we could work together. No, absolutely. No, I, I do. The other way around as well. The sort of like, what is sustainable? What can you do? What you, know, what sort of you know, jungle produce is not damaging to the environment? What sort of well, that's not why I like for you. What what species are you know are local and sustainably produced uh, that can be? Is that so? I I've wandered around Laos in the middle of you know, Udamsai wondering like, can I can I eat this? Should I eat this? That people are offering me. Things that oh we just hunted this this morning and I was like well that's great but um, <laughs> how did you how did you hunt it and are, and is there another one but yeah so um, but um, no so I mean that sort of thing is is definitely you know, it, there's there are definitely collaborations and things that uh, would make sense to to do together. For instance, I have seen some very nice promotional videos about uh, about, about Lao. Uh, great video, very well done. And in this video, they went to the local market to to explore the yeah the local food and cuisine. And probably the the, the bloggers, the influencers, then they, they were not aware what they were promoting, but what they were showing in their video was totally illegal. And these kind of uh, things. This is just about raising the raising the the knowledge, uh, raising the voice that uh, what should be tried and what should not be tried, and trying to emphasize on the positive uh, side of it. No, great. No, thanks. And 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 this is actually one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of put this uh, call together and as a reg regular call, maybe every every month or so. Um, to get the, the, the chairs, the vice chairs, and, and, and also the uh, Destination Mekong board members together into a forum uh, to discuss, you know, yes, collaboration, but also the direction of Destination Mekong, you know, so, so I think that's a, I, I think this will be an important platform and forum to have these discussions. Yes, Mia? Could I suggest, and I don't know if this makes uh, sense, necessarily every time we have these chair and co-chair meetings. But if, for instance, a group has recently released their um, you know, mission statement and they have particular initiatives that they're working on or things that they would like to work on, maybe they can have 10 minutes in these uh, chair and co-chair meetings to present them and then open up the floor for possible collaborations going forward or inputs from other groups. Because I think, you know, we get a lot of communications from many different sources and there's a lot of communications from Maytag. And I have every intention of attending all of the expert group meetings and every intention of reading all of the missives, but sometimes they slip through the cracks. So it's nice to be able to really like in real time discuss with the people who are in this. Yeah, no, I mean, good point. And, and, and this on this call, I didn't want to do it because I want to kind of frame it a little bit. But I think normally I think it's good to actually have all the groups maybe to give a quick update if that is just two to five minutes. I mean, obviously that that already is a half an hour, but I think that this is good to to 
you know, give a little, get a little bit inside what everyone is doing. Because let's say if someone says, oh yeah, we're working this and this, you may say me, oh, this is great. Actually, we can collaborate or we're doing something similar. Why don't we do this together? But if you didn't know, you wouldn't know, right? So, so I think that that should be part of these uh, these chair vice chair meetings to try get a get a quick update, and then out of that, I think the discussion naturally will evolve uh, how uh, how you know collaboration could start. Or also one of the things that Destination Mekong should focus on, uh, maybe as a campaign, right? So I mean, you know, I work with Garrett and Ton and saying like, hey, you know what, this is um, here's here's let's say an initiative or a campaign that we want to do. Uh, so that could also be driven out of the initiatives from the expert groups, you know, so, so I totally agree. So, yeah, and I guess um, just because I know there's also a lot of meetings that we sit in where like it's many, many, many updates one after the other, maybe instead of every group updating every time you can kind of nominate yourself if you have a very specific thing that you'd like to share with the chairs and then sure. they would get like a slightly more significant chunk instead of two minutes, you get like 10 minutes plus five minutes for questions or something. And then each, sure. each one would have a different yeah yeah no I agree good i think i think we're almost at the end of the call uh i, I gotta run in a, in, a, in a few minutes but if there's any anyone else who wants to share something C could i just go back to the board thing for a second sure um i would you know just from a personal standpoint i think you know a lot of us uh are committing a lot of time already so the idea of an additional commitment that would involve governance or operations or some sort of you know more hands-on even even you know in whatever form it takes but something a little bit more involved uh might not fit in with uh be beyond like Gabriella's concerns about what an organization's role in another organization could be um you know that would be another um uh consideration for me uh if i mean I, I personally wouldn't be prepared to commit a lot more time to do more than an expert group could do you know some sort of, if if from the you know if something emanates from the board and says you know we need like, like you were saying earlier we need a food project and you know and the group executes the project or advises on how to execute the project that's great um but it would stay you know asking for a, a greater commitment i'm not speaking I, I don't know if i'm speaking for anybody else here but um i probably don't have a lot of time and uh and energy for that i i think that's fair enough and I, everyone's different i mean as willem said no one will be forced to be on the board uh, I, I, as I see it, I think, you know, I want, I want to look at the goal. What's the goal? The goal is to give the, the expert groups a voice into the board when it comes to strategy and direction and operations. I think that's the goal that we want to do. There are various ways of, of, of tackling that. But I, in, in, your, in your case, let's say you're, you're, you're chair of, the, of the, the, the food group. And if you say, well, you know what? Yes, I love to chair the food group, but I can't, you know, be involved in the board and this and that. You know, I, I think if we look at it in the, in the point that, yes, we want to have a voice or representation of these expert groups on the board, and it might be just more like uh, as an observer, um, uh, and, and you maybe the groups can say, well, you know what, it might be someone different, that there's someone that is nominated then to represent the group on the board for that role, right? So, so I think... Uh, there, there are ways around it, you know, so I think it doesn't have to be the chair or the vice chair. So, I mean, if the chair doesn't want to do it, I, I would just say the chair gets the first option. Uh, and if the chair doesn't want to do it, it could be the vice chair or nominate someone else, you know. Uh, it, the only thing, it would be obviously good if that person stays consistent, because, uh, I mean, any of you have been in many meetings. So, so let's say today it's Vincent, uh, tomorrow it's it's uh, Sophie, and then and then it's Mia uh, from that group, and, and and these people don't know what what happened uh, was discussed before. So I think it should be one person uh, that is nominated, but doesn't have to be the chair necessarily. Okay. All right. I think uh, any other points? Any other thoughts? If not, then I think this was a very, in my opinion, very productive call, 90 minutes. 
I think we want to keep it at 90 minutes always. So um, with that, I think uh, I will close the call. I thank everyone for their time and uh, and uh, contribution and, and, and for driving the, the groups. Anybody, I mean, uh, if anyone has a, has a question and I might not be the one that can answer it, but feel free to contact me anytime, you know, send me a message, call me, send me an email, and I'm happy to at least listen and, and see if I can if I can help or not. Um, and, 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 and then we can see how we can, how we can maybe move forward. But um, we're also looking to, you know, this, this uh, recording to make that available. So, so um, other people in your groups can, can listen as well. We obviously wanted to have this, this uh, discussion fairly small. So we had around 10 to 15 people, which I think is ideal. Um, but we want the other people obviously also get the benefit of these discussions and thoughts. So, so we're looking to put all the call uh, recordings or link them to, to YouTube. We'll have to see on Destination Mekong. So anyone can go back to all the various calls and see, okay, here's, here's, here's what was discussed. Uh, if they just want to check back uh, to get any points or, you know, or if they've missed a call. So I think that's, uh, that's something that we want to do because I think a lot of calls have lots of good information in there, especially this one, I believe. So with that, uh, Garrett, Ton, any other thoughts? If not, no, I think it's fine. Okay, then with that, thank you very much. And um, we'll talk to you soon. I don't know what's the next call. Is there so many? Then, Sophie, any, you're waving or you're, <laughs> no, okay. Thank you very okay. much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, take care. Thank okay. you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.